Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood pyrography artist, here to help guide you on your burning adventures. So I wanted to do this video. Last Wednesday, I did the live video doing um, white hair, and I was not happy with it. In fact, what you're seeing right now is part of what we did on Wednesday, and I did it freehand. And that's what I kind of want to focus on this video about is I've seen discussions on freehand versus a pattern and I am definitely not happy with this freehand and so we're going to look at how much of a difference doing something freehand and then doing it with a pattern makes with this one I don't have a whole lot of contrast I put in um, some hair strands and so it looks more straggly than it does a little bit coarse because it is beer, beard hair but then it should be soft and on this next one I did a second one but <laughs> for whatever reason the computer decided it wanted to corrupt the file so I don't have it. What I am showing you is where I was making a quick pattern. I wasn't using my stylus to draw. I was just using a quick pattern to get some of the detail and use that for the burning. And a lot of times I do this for um, different animals and whatnot, but this just didn't give me the detail I needed. So that's the pattern I used for this one which again, I don't have the video for. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into the detailed one. If you notice, I've got the photo right next to me so I can glance at it. And I'm looking at it a lot. There's a lot more lines down on the board. In fact, there's more lines on the board than I normally use. But in this particular case, I need to get the clumps and have them going in the right direction as well as having some of the straggler hairs. I'm starting off with the coal wood. This is, I believe, the flat, small round. I'm trying to block in some of the areas that are darker up on where the face is on the left side. And just make sure that I'm not burning it a solid color, just trying to get that laid out so I know where I'm going and how much you need to darken it and what to keep light. I'm not burning over the graphite pencil lines that I've laid down. I'm just going right up against them and trying not to have too much heat touch the graphite because I do want to be able to remove it later. And I think I left that in the video of me erasing. That That's kind of like removing tape from paper. It's a little satisfying to remove the pencil lines, but I can't remember if I left it in. So anyway, I'm just trying to get some of the singular hairs that are next to the face. And I only added a little bit or left in a little bit of the fur cap, but it's really all the same. It's just trying to get the right contrast and starting lighter because you can always darken it. And that's what I'm working on now. If you look to the left at my reference photo, you will see blue lines. I actually transfer this directly from the photo instead of trying to go into Photoshop and draw out all these lines. I converted to black and white so I could see what's darker and what's lighter and then try to draw, try to trace over as much of the clump as and a few single hairs. I didn't put every single one of them in and just because I transferred directly from the photo it still does not come out looking exactly like the photo and that that goes back to what we discussed last week of how even if you do this from a photo it still will not be exact it's still your work and that makes a difference but because I transferred from directly from the photo I have a clear view of what I want transferred and that makes it easier to focus on going for that realism, not outlining it. Because I am using the photo, I'm a lot more focused and have a better idea of what I want to do. 
by just looking at the photo and trying to do it freehand. And if that's the way you do it, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you're having a problem achieving the realism you want, I would suggest giving it a try of laying out a pattern, whether it's in Photoshop, like I did in with the second one, which was less, still less detailed because I still didn't have a complete visual of where I wanted to go or going more detailed with your lines like I have with this one. The second one isn't bad. If you're going for a little cartoony or less realism, it worked great. Um, I was definitely a lot more happy happier with the second one than I was the first one. I'm looking at all three of them. And that first one is just, honestly, I'm embarrassed by it. And I knew I could do better and I wanted to do better for you guys. I felt less prepared for the live. I should have taken the time to do what I'm do what I did here on transferring the pattern. But live and learn. I don't do as well. 100% freehand and that's okay. It doesn't take away from my work. But with doing this detailed version from the photo, I am getting a, a better result. It looks more like hair. I have to say the second one kind of reminds me of the movie Santa Claus. I think the second one with the uh, toy Santa that was created, the hair looks more fake. It, it doesn't Look, I mean, it could go for real hair if you're doing a piece where the person is further back so there's less detail in it and that would work great and I've got the shading in there and everything but for somebody close up, especially along the hairline and if any hair falls to the side, if it's just a portrait, you're going to want to take more time like I am with the the one I'm burning now. The second one took me an hour and 21 minutes to burn, which is why it's so frustrating I had to do it for a third time, but I'm actually glad I did. I've never done white hair, and so there's a bit of some learning I needed to do, and that's okay. It's not something I've done in the past, so I needed to figure out how to do it as well. Um, so I'm focusing on just trying to get the, the um, smaller hairs down at the bottom. I don't want too big of a clump, but where the beard or the um, sideburn meet with the hair, it's finer or thinner, but coarser hair. So I don't want every single one of them in. I just want to group them and get together as much as I can and use value to separate the different strands. And that's what I um, do work on the most as we get further in the video. I'm going to go ahead and add some music here. And you can just, you know, kind of follow along with how I'm sectioning off the clumps. And then I'll come back.
Alrighty, I have erased, got rid of my pencil lines, and now I can really see a lot of the clumps. I will say this is where I messed up. I should not have used this coarse hair uh, tip. This is an Ultima tip. I love the tip. It works awesome for other types of hair, but for what I'm doing right now, I went in too dark and didn't put them exactly where I should have. And that was, I didn't stick with it for very long because I got a little frustrated with myself. I was like, ah, oh, I've gotten this far and I go and mess up, but it's okay. I'm going to try to bring it back. Some of those hairs, I just didn't get the shape right. Again, it's a great pen. I love this pen. I just didn't use it in the best way. This was complete user error, not a function of the pen. And I will come back in between the op uh, Optima Medium 18 Spearpoint shader and the Colwood Flat Round and try to work these darker lines in that I either should not have put in at all or just waited until I had more definition in there. But you can see that the hair is starting to... It, right now it still looks really straggly and it's going to take shading and even shading across the hairs to kind of push some of them back and bring others forward so they look more like a clump and I that's what I spend a lot of time working on is trying to push some of those hairs back into the background so that they're there they're holding a space but not every single hair is you know outlined and and up front and center because that's not how it works you know hair and fur are in layers and so i need some of that pushed back This is where the real shading starts. This is where I am going over clumps of the hair because it needs to be pushed back as I was saying before. And now it's going to make it look more, give you more of a clump feel, but you can tell it's hair. I hope that, <laughs> that makes sense. I don't want every single strand to stand out. And so I'm shading, I'm starting off light because I can build that up and there are areas that are going to go darker in order to make the main hairs pop out more. But I'm just trying to go in, get more of a uniform feel to the hair, give it more shape. I can shade, you know, where one hair is going under another one so that top one pops out a little bit more. I also need to work in those darker strands that I put in that I shouldn't have, but that's okay. It happens and I'm not burning this one a fourth time. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it, so it's okay. We're just going to move on. I did unfortunately um, do even more in-depth shading towards the end and for whatever reason, that file decided to be corrupt as well. So I had to go back in this morning and add a little bit more shading so you can see um, what I was doing. But ultimately, it was what you're seeing here, just going over, trying to pick out what hairs are on top and getting hit by the light versus some of the hair that's underneath that is, you know, pushing that hair up and giving the fullness that you're looking for, especially for, for a Santa hair and beard. You know, you want that fluffiness. And it's going to be ultimately your shading and 
what you put together hair wise or strain wise versus what you push back. This is where I had already darkened it and the lost footage one of these days there's going to be an archaeology dig in our backyard and they're going to find the missing files and yeah anyway <laughs> so here I've already darkened some and unfortunately those dark lines from when I used the coarse hair tip is still standing out but that's okay there is some darks in it and I'm just going to have to be happy with it. I am overall happy with how much better this looks compared to the first two. I am glad that I went back and did it even though it was for a third time and I was putting in a lot of work just for a sample. I am extremely happy I did it because I learned a lot from it. So I would suggest if there's an area of a burning that you think you might have a problem with, pull out a piece of scrap wood, go ahead and lay the pattern out the way you plan on doing it for your piece and yes try burning that small area so you can work out any issues that you might have. I decided here to go ahead and add some white colored pencil just to give it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more nuance. Um, in the final photo you really can't see the white but it's there and to seal it I would spray um, two coats of clear polyurethane just to lock in that white water or sorry white colored pencil so that when I brush on my clear coat it doesn't smear and I've had that happen and it's very frustrating and the first time it happens and you don't know the difference you're like oh my goodness I have ruined it but spray always use a um, clear coat spray two thin coats at least to lock in your color whatever that media is because the clear coat can reactivate it and move it around. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. It, I think it stands out as real hair versus the first two I did and I do feel like I redeemed myself just a little bit. So these are the comparison of the three that I did and it much better. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully this video has helped you take one more step in your burning adventures. If you're new here, please click the subscribe and the little notification bell so you never miss a video. Also, please like up this video and leave a comment. I appreciate you spending your time with me. Happy burning, guys. Bye.